This video is working with Wilcom Embroidery Studio software. Today's video is going to be covering all the menus in Wilcom, their functions and their uses. This is part one of two. Okay, today we're going to go through the file menus up here and go through each one and let you know what the function is for each menu. You can see there's a blank window here with no design open. So your menu menus are not going to have all the full menus showing. If you go to file, new design, that's going to open up a design window. And that's where it's going to pop up all the available menus to use while digitizing in Wilcom Embroidery Studio. So let's go through the files. I just showed you new design. That's going to pull up a new design window. New from template. What that's going to do is you can save templates for different settings that you want to save and use at a future date. So this is where you'll pull up your template that you have saved and that'll open a new design window using that template. Next is open design. That's simply going to pull up a folder on your computer and you can open existing designs that are saved on your computer. File open recent. This is going to pull up a menu of all the recent designs that you've been working on. So it's a quick reference to pull up a design that you've just previously been working on. Open backup design. So Wilcom is set up to automatically save after a certain amount of time. Uh, this is a just a backup where in case of a power failure or something like that, or your, or your computer crashes, your software crashes, it's actually going to save it periodically. So you can actually find a backup design and it'll open up to the last point at which the automatic save was done. The close menu is going to be simply closing the design that you have open currently. Close all. If you have multiple designs open, this will close all those windows. Save is going to save the design. So if you haven't began the design saving process, you would hit save and then you would choose a file name at your desired folder on your computer. Or if you've been continually working on the design, you could hit save and it's going to save to that point that you've been, the progress you've been going. Save as gives you an option to save the design in a different file name or a different folder. Save as template. And this is where if you want to go ahead and set all your settings and anything you want to save into a template, this is going to give you the option to save as template. And as you can see, it does give you a template extension .emt. So that's going to go ahead and save that particular template in your desired folder. Export machine file. Exporting the machine file means that you're going to be saving in a different format, such as a DST or another format that your machine can read. Your machine's not going to read the native EMB file, so you need to save it or export it into that format that the machines can read. This export machine file into a format that other softwares can read as well. If you are sending the design to somebody else that does not have the Wilcon system, you'll want to export a machine file to something like a DST, and that is a universal file that most digitizing softwares can open. Print is going to simply open up your printer dialog that you see on your PC or your Mac. And so you can print the design that you have open. Print preview is going to give you more options to choose from. As you can see up here, there's uh, different ways of viewing this. You have options to go into as far as what type of information you need. And you hit the print now to go ahead and print that information once you've set up a you want your printed design going to look. 
import embroidery. So if you have another design that you may want to import and include into the design window that you have already, you can import an, an embroidery design. So if you wanted to import another file, as you can see, I imported that second file into the design window that I already had open. Import graphic. That is where you're going to import a graphic into your design window. That is going to be your backdrop for your digitizing process. So you can see the artwork that you're working on and it's going to be in the background as you're digitizing. Scan graphic. That's simply if you have a scanner hooked up to your computer, you can you can choose to scan a graphic directly from the scanner into the embroidery software. Export design as vector. This is where it's actually going to take the image of your design and it's going to export it in a vector format. A vector format you can use you bring into another design program such as Illustrator or Corel and you can manipulate the design as a vector format artwork. Export multi-decoration. This is where it's going to actually allow you to export it into different file formats such as Corel Draw, AutoCAD, Illustrator. Uh, it's just if you're if you're using the design for multiple uses this is where you would use the multi-decoration file export. Capture design bitmap. This is where you can simply export your design as a raster image to view the design just as a non-embroidery file. Capture virtual decoration bitmap. This is actually going to save it in a high-res transparent background PNG file, which you can use in your virtual decoration, your virtual samples. Uh, it's a, it's a high quality image of the design. That's going to look photorealistic of the stitches in the design and, and allow you to show a sample without actually sewing out an embroidery sample. Send via email. This is where you can send directly. It'll uh, open up your email program, the, your default email program on your on your computer, and it'll send the design file. Export design properties. Export design properties. That's if you have your, your machine hooked to your computer, it's going to output current design information and machine runtime settings to a CSV file. Send to Connection Manager. This is where if your machines are connected to your computer, it's going to send the file to a queue of where you can send those embroidery files to your machine. Send to Embroider Connect. That's if you have the Embroider Connect system available on your computer and your machines. Queue design again is used in sending a design to the queue for the for the machines that are hooked up to your computer. Cross stitch is just going to access cross stitch application. Exit, of course, exits from the software. Now on to the edit. Of course, the undo, just like any other computer, there's an undo. You could undo your last action to get you back to the previous state. Redo. If you undo an action, such as I had delete selects last time, you can redo that action that you just undid. 
cut is going to whatever you have selected in your design window. If you select cut, it's going to cut those objects from your design window. Paste, we'll paste it back. Copy is just going to copy the information that you have selected in your window. And paste is going to paste that copied section. Paste after selected. So if you have a an object selected and you simply do copy and paste, as you can see in the color object list, it's going to paste that object at the end of your design. If you select copy paste after selected, it simply puts that copied selection after that selected section. So it doesn't put it at the end of the design. Paste special. You can choose a position to paste the, the new object, shift the pasted object in a different place, center at current stitch. So if you have it, if you're at a location in your design, you can center it on that stitch or you can start it at the current stitch. Duplicate simply duplicates the element you have select currently selected. Again, adding it to the end of the design. It's just a quick way of copy and paste, basically. <laughs> duplicate with offset. That's offsetting the area where it duplicated so it's not sitting in the same location. Again, a quicker way of copy and paste special. Delete is going to delete the, the segment that you have selected. Select all is going to select all the visible elements in your design window. Deselect all is going to do the opposite where it deselects it. Select by color. This is where it's going to allow you to select only a individual color in your design and not the whole thing. Select by stitch type. Again, allowing you to select only the elements in a certain st stitch type. If you wanted only your satin stitches selected, you select satin, hit OK, and it's only going to select your satin stitches. If you want only your tatami or your fill stitches, you select that, and it's only going to select those tatami stitches. So your next is going to be closed curve with a straight line. So I'm going to actually digitize a shape here using some running stitches and not close the shape completely. I'm going to end it there so you can see there is an open end to that shape. So if I have the end, that shape selected, you go to close curve with a straight line. That's going to close the shape with a straight line, as you can see. Or close curve with a curved line. And it's going to close it with a curved line. As you can see, there's a curve in that line. So it closes the shape that's that's not closed previously. It's going to close it for you automatically. Reverse curves. So if you have a design that, is, so as you can see here, the, the green signifies the start point and the red signifies the stop point. So if I have an element selected and I want to reverse curves, it's actually going to reverse the direction of where that stitches is going to go. So instead of ending here, it now ends back to the beginning. So it's going to travel through the design or through the element and it's going to sew in the opposite direction that it was previously. A lot of times you'll use this function with a motif 
uh, that is maybe pointing a element in a certain direction or the design in a certain direction, say as an arrow mo motif, and it's pointing to the right. If you want it to point to the left, you use this edit reverse curves. Now swap sides. So say like you have a jagged edge on a particular element. Instead of going into the decorative menu, you could simply swap sides and it's going to change the side of the actual satin or the element that you're that you're applying a certain function. So let's get to swap the sides. The other one was reversing the direction of the of the way it sews. This is going to swap sides as far as what function is applied to this element. Next is smooth curves. So say like you have an element or a vector art that has a lot of individual nodes in it and it's not very smooth and you want to smooth a, a certain shape out. You can select smooth curves, give it a precision value, and it's going to smooth out those, those areas. So say like I give it a pretty high value there. And it's going to smooth out those edges instead of having that such a rough edge. Transform. When you have a element selected, you can transform it by mirroring it horizontally, mirroring it vertically, mirroring it by a reference line. So you can choose a line in your design window to mirror it to. You could rotate it a certain direction, counterclockwise or clockwise, 15 degrees. Transform by reference line numerically. That's if you want to, you can choose two points in the, in the element and you can give it a size, an exact size that you want that element to be. I gave it 15 millimeters, so it reduced it. Using that line that I drew on the element, it reduced it to 15 millimeters wide. Transform by reference line freely. You draw a reference line on the element, and that will attach to your cursor. And you can drop that element anywhere you want. And when you first click, you can it'll anchor the element and you can rotate it through that anchor. And so now it moved the element and rotated the element as well. Next one is envelope. Envelope is used a lot of times when you're trying to distort a object or text in a way in a in a uniform way let me use text as an example so if i wanted to take this text and say like i wanted to arc it or turn it into a diamond shape you'll select the text use envelope bridge is one where you can manipulate the arc of the text top and bottom you can make it kind of bubble out You can delete that once you've done it. If you didn't like that shape, you can delete the envelope from that object. Object. Select this text again. Pennant. This is where you're going to actually change the individual ends of the design. If you want something kind of going down, getting bigger at the ends, that's one option. Perspective is where it's going to change the perspective vertically and diamond. Diamond is where you could actually give it a diamond shape. So delete is going to only delete the last envelope that you did. So as you delete, it'll go back. If you've applied several different envelopes, it's going to delete them one by one as you go backwards. It's kind of like an undo. View. So the different views in your design window. So true view is going to actually show the design in a simulated stitch form. So it gives you the most realistic view of the design. Show. 
So this is where you're going to have an option to show stitches. So this is now just an outline form. If you want to show the stitches, show outlines. So as an example, if I turn off stitches now, I turn off outlines. Now you don't see anything because there's no stitches or outline selected. So if you choose the outline, it's just the outline form of the design. Show needle points. That's if you want to see each individual needle point. As you can see, the, the white dots signify the needle points that are getting sewn in the design. Turn those off. Show connectors. As you can see, show connectors are going to show how the next element is connected. The dotted lines show that there is a trim between them, so this signifies jump stitches between all the elements, and that's showing you the connecting lines. Show functions are going to show the functions within the design, such as lock stitches or starting points and ending points or trims with different symbols. The circle, the little small black circle as you see here is the starting point of this element. The triangle is showing that there is a trim at the end of the element, as you can see down here as well. Repeats. Any repeats set up in your design, this is where it's going to show those repeats. Show bitmaps. This is where it's going, you can toggle the graphic that you have in the background, you could toggle that off and on. Vectors, same as if you have vector elements drawn in your design window, that's going to toggle it off and on as far as your view of the vectors. Dim graphics, you select that and the bitmap in the background is going to be dimmed into a lighter bitmap and that sometimes just helps you see the stitches on top of your artwork. Applique fabric. You choose this if you do have a backdrop of applique fabric that you want to see visible in your design window. Products. There's different products that you could bring in into your design window if you want to see kind of a, a virtual placement on a of a design on a product such as a, a left chest design or a hat design. Bling is if you have a bling application installed and you can use for decorations such as rhinestones. Hoop. This is going to give you a hoop image in the background so you can see the sewing area that you have in any particular hoop. So you can actually open up the exact same size hoops to see if a design is going to fit in the sewing field of that hoop. Hoop template. This is going to give you an example of the sew area of your design. So it gives you a template view of your, of your hoop. Show grid is going to show the grid in the background of your design. That just helps you with measurements, um, kind of gives you a ruler within the design field. Show rulers and guides. This is where you can toggle off and on your rulers on the top and side. If you click on the ruler, you can add a guide. Zoom, that's going to simply zoom your design window. Uh, there's different values that you could zoom. You can zoom one to one. You could zoom a factor. You could zoom just uh, automatic 1.25 one in and out, two times in and out. Zoom to fit the window, the zoom selected. It gives you different options as far as how you can zoom into the design. Pan, that's going to give you this little hand on your cursor. If you click and hold, you can pan your window up, down, left, or right, however you go in direction you want to move it. Previous view is just going to jump back to the previous view that you had. Center current stitch. So that's just going to center the current stitch that you have selected or this current element. 
measure. Again, it pulls up a little ruler in your cursor. That's when you can click one area, click another area, and as you can see, the values of that measurement is going to change as you move your cursor around. So if you need a certain distance measured, you just click on one side, drag it over to the other area that you need to go, and it'll give you that, that length and also angles. Click again, and it's gonna now change the anchor point to where you re-clicked, and you can get those values of how far and what angle the next element that you're trying to measure. Stitch player. Stitch player, if you select this, is going to actually stitch the design as it does on the machine. It's gonna show you what area that it's gonna be in the design as far as how far along and what color you're gonna be in. These are left and right as arrows are going to be your back or forward functions. You can speed up the speed of the stitches as well using this toggle here. And that allows you to stitch through the design virtually and to see how it sews. View by color. Much like select by color, this can allow you to just view a certain color of your design. And that's going to only show the selected color that you chose. View all colors, that's going to bring them all back. Refresh screen just refreshes your screen. Now onto the design menu. Design properties, that's gonna pull up your Docker that's gonna give you all the design properties such as file names, any comments that you wanna do. You could put subjects, uh, different information that you can go through and, and collect from the design information. Machine format. Select machine format is to choose the machine format corresponding to the embroidery machine you'll be using. So you're going to set the particular format of the machine that you're going to be using. Machine format settings. This defines the values to encode when outputting onto a specific machine format. You can choose such as how many jump stitch codes is going to activate a trim on your machine different settings you could do for different machines. Background display colors. Background color is going is talking about the the background of your design window. You can actually choose different colors that you can apply to the back of the window. Auto fabric Auto fabric is going to change the current fabric type and its associated settings. You can set up automatic settings for certain fabrics and you can apply that to the whole design. Auto hoop. That prompts the system to select a suitable hoop from my hoops list for your design. So it's going to pull up a, a hoop that it's recommending to fit all the elements in your design into that desired hoop. Auto start and end. This is good where you get to choose where you want your, your start point of your design and your end point. Uh, it defaults to just the center of the design. Uh, if there is a particular Point of the design, maybe you want in a different area, like the corner, the left side, or like some people use on hats, they use the bottom center. You could actually digitize manually the start and stop point in different functions as far as auto start and end of the design. Remove small stitches. So if you have stitches in the design that are created that are under a certain length that you know that might cause issues when sewing the design, you can manually remove any small stitches under a certain minimum stitch length. Mm -hmm. 
repeats. So say you want to repeat a design in your hoop and you want to, such as if you're running patches or something like that, you could actually repeat your design and it'll choose how many times the distance between the design horizontally and vertically. So it's a step and repeat function of the design. And that's the end of part one. Please check out the channel for part two. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.